geologists who study the structure of the Earth's crust have realized that almost everywhere the rocks they find on the surface have been thrust up, tilted, bent, or broken during the long history of the Earth. mountain ranges around the world, they have found great layers tilted like these. In fact, undisturbed rocks are the exception rather than the rule. When mountains are raised, the rocks are put under great pressure for layered rocks near the Earth's surface that usually means they are bent or folded. When the rocks are folded up and over like these, the fold is called an anticline. If, on the other hand, the layers of rock are bent down like these, the fold is called a syncline. So up-folded layers of rock are called anticlines, and downfolded layers are called synclines. Folds may range in size from very small ones like this to folds large enough to make up entire mountains like these in the Canadian Rockies. Along the east coast from Vermont to Alabama the ridges and valleys of the Appalachians form a complex folded region with anticlines and synclines that are 10 to 20 kilometers across and as much as 100 kilometers long. Over millions of years, erosion has removed the softer rocks. In some places, the core of a large anticline has been eroded away leaving ridges on either side of a stream valley. In West Virginia, the Massanutten syncline forms a mountain capped by resistant rock and containing a valley at the top rather than a crest as in most mountains. The valley is formed by the natural slope of the syncline. The people who live here are effectively isolated by the steep walls of the syncline but the land on which they live rolls very gently. The syncline runs horizontally for a good distance, but it finally plunges into the earth, creating a canoe-shaped series of ridges where the rocks disappear beneath the surface. In western Wyoming, this structure called the Sheep Mountain Anticline offers a better view of plunging folded rocks. Here the beds stand out, uncluttered by trees, and their canoe-shaped form is easy to see. While many larger folds form mountain ridges, within the larger folds, smaller folds can be seen. They develop when beds slide or drag against one another during the folding process. These are called drag folds. They are very common and provide a tool which geologists can often use to help in mapping the larger structures. By studying these small folds and observing that they are nearly horizontal, we can conclude that they must be part of a much larger fold that is lying on its side. Extensive mapping has revealed a very large fold 13 kilometers wide and stretching 40 kilometers to the east and west. This kind of fold is called a recumbent anticline. The Sourtown Mountains of North Carolina are all that is left of this fold after millions of years of erosion. Hanging Rock, Pilot Mountain, and a few other remnants are now the only visible surface features. Sometimes conditions cause very sharp bends called chevron folds. Here in Tazewell, Virginia, this limestone is nearly straight 
from one fold axis to the next, but the folds themselves are quite sharp and distinct. The forces which cause a rock to bend or fold may also cause it to break. Geologists call breaks in the rocks fractures or joints. Fractures are very common. You've probably seen them at one time or another. Most large outcrops have one or more sets of joints or fractures cutting through the rocks. In this outcrop, there's a set of joints here, a second set cutting through the rock this way, and a third set cutting nearly horizontally through this one outcrop. In the event that rocks on either side of a fracture move, the fracture is called a fault. And it is the movement of rocks on either side of a fault that causes earthquakes. There are three major kinds of faults. The first is caused by forces that pull rocks apart so that gravity causes one block to move down in relation to the other. This creates what is called a normal fault. Here we can see a normal fault exposed by highway construction. The block on the left has moved down relative to the block on the right. Sometimes a normal fault can involve a large section of crust. This valley was formed when the block on one side of a fault moved down over millions of years. As it filled with mud and sand, it slowly became a swamp in which dinosaurs roamed. Evidence of dinosaurs who inhabited many such swamps has been found in Connecticut, Maryland, Virginia, and the Carolinas. The basins formed by large normal faults developed along the eastern coast of the United States about 200 million years ago as the North American and African plates separated along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. When the rocks on either side of a fracture are pushed together rather than being pulled apart, the rocks on one side of the fracture may move up relative to the other side. If the angle of the fault is steep, geologists call it a reverse fault. Such faults are very common in the western United States. Although the fault itself is seldom exposed, the sedimentary rocks overlying the fault are often folded into open flowing folds like these on the eastern side of the Beartooth Plateau in Wyoming. When a fault is more nearly horizontal, the forces involved in pushing on the rocks may shove one block of rock up and over another. Here on the banks of the New River in Virginia, this kind of reverse fault called a thrust fault is exposed in this cliff. This fault is involved in the building of an entire mountain range and is evidence of the tremendous forces involved in pushing one group of rocks up and over the rocks below. The last major type of fault is one where the movement is horizontal, with one block moving past the other. This type of fault is known as a strike-slip fault. A famous example is the San Andreas Fault, which runs along the coast of California. This aerial view of the fault shows its trace on the Earth's surface. The fault is active, posing a constant threat of earthquakes to the people who live in California. Around the world, folding and faulting are responsible for the building of major mountain ranges. The ridge and valley province we saw earlier is made entirely of folded and faulted sedimentary rock. As we have seen, large folds and thrust faults eroded over long periods have created straight ridges and wide valleys. In the Rockies, Large reverse faults have lifted the mountain mass, bending up great beds of sedimentary rock along the mountain fronts.
faulting of major blocks lifted the Grand Tetons in Wyoming. The same processes are at work raising the Sierra Nevada mountains in California. Large normal and reverse faults across the Colorado Plateau have bowed sediments into large mountains, while the same kinds of faults have created blocks of mountains in Montana and Nevada. Anticlines, synclines, normal and reverse faults, thrust faults. These are terms geologists have used to describe what has happened to the rocks. As they studied and mapped, they marveled at the forces which break and bend rocks within the crust, raising mountains and changing the shape of the land. 